All right. Today I'm going to be firing up a couple of my rocket stoves. This one over here on the right is a stainless steel rocket stove. I was in Walmart and I noticed, I was like, hey, wait, we got some like little sugar containers here. Um, I think they're the medium sized sugar containers. And I wanted to build a rocket stove out of some decent material, so I'd just, like, uh, I'll spend 16 bucks on a couple containers to make it. Um, it came out pretty good for the first go around. I used a, I think it was a 16 ounce, um, Hunt's tomato sauce can. And we've got some chimney mortar, which I, that's the one thing that I don't like about this one project. And I used some of the stainless steel for the little feed tube. This rocket stove is slightly different in the sense that I don't have the little shelf in the feed tube. I've actually got holes around the bottom. And it is filled with miracle grow perlite. So the air comes through the bottom and comes up through those little holes. So essentially there is no, you know, it's just an air barrier in there. I've got some photos on how I built it, but I don't know if I'm going to put it on the video or not. So anyways, and then I found this little, it was a cage basically to hold utensils and stuff. I hacked off the bottom of it. I figured, hey, this would make a, like, a little nice little grate type thing if you have a small cup you want to boil some water in or if you want to put something on top, you can. So it seems to work okay. Um, then I wanted to make one that was a little bit lighter because the stainless steel is a little bit on the heavy side. And what I have here is I've got a, a three inch stovepipe T. And I got a paint can. This one's filled with the Miracle Girl Perlite. Anyways, I found the bottom. I've got a like little one inch piece of tin can for the actually Anima. Careful, bud. That's what we're looking at right now. This is a little shelf. Then I got the can at the bottom to hold the any ash or whatever from hitting the bottom of the can. And I wanted to have a shelf that went all the way back, so that's why I have the holes in there. That way you don't have like pieces of wood can levering over. Helps get a better burn. And my son, which is figuring out how to use this, this is a little cross, cross section. Sheet metal, kind of flash together like that, and nice Nemo. <laughs> Say excuse me. There you go. Put this in here. Try and do this through the camera. It's a little bit odd. There you go. Anyways, so you have that, and I've actually I've got a decent sized pan that I've stuck on this. And as long as you get a balance right, it's fine. I haven't boiled it because it's, you know, it's a fairly expensive pan. I didn't really want to have it over open flame. But anyways, that is this. And that is that. And I will get these things going and have another video in just a couple minutes here. All right. This one's going really good. And get into it. It's going, been going for probably about three minutes now. I'm new at this rocket stove thing. This one, I'm also using very dry wood too. It's, um, oak rips from flooring, so should be burning pretty good. That's all for my time. This one does not run as well because I've got holes going around the hole. I've got, I think, eight holes on the bottom. So it's kind of a three-dimensional thing. Uh, it's, uh, not a three-dimensional thing, but a multi-directional base. So with these types of wood stoves, where it has that air inlet in there, you can face 
phase it into the wind, which works well for getting the thing to go. Whereas this one, you don't face it into the wind because there is no face to it, except for where the, the wood goes in. So, And this one, I had, I don't know, probably about a cup's worth of water that I had in a tin can. And in about five minutes, it had it boiling. That was with a good, good fire going in it. This one, it took a lot longer. And this one is definitely cooler looking because stainless steel and whatnot took a little bit more time and money to build. But um, having the air inlets around the base has not proved to be as successful as having it right under the wood feed. So anyways, I think with a handful of wood, if you didn't jam it in there like I just did, I think I had this one going for a good 20 minutes with a handful of um, primarily softwood. I think I had little, two little chunks of, maybe three little chunks of oak. So these are my two rocket stoves. And that one's cool. That one works a lot better. And I like the idea. A lot of people make them out of coffee cans and stuff. I wanted something that was a little bit, you know, had a fastened top. So I figured a paint can would work pretty well. Um, the the steel key that I have in the in the paint can for the for the actual stove itself was I think eight dollars, and that was coming from a it's like 24 gauge steel, so it should last a lot longer than a tin can. But it cost me like eight bucks plus two fifty or so, three dollars for the tin can. So yeah, you, you got like twelve dollars. It's all said and done, wrapped up in something like that. Maybe 13 when you've got the steel on top and the vermiculite or whatever. So this one I've got probably about twenty dollars into, and a lot more time. So these are my two stoves. Hope you like it. I appreciate all the other other videos that have been on YouTube regarding the rocket stove. So, all right. Take care. All right. I have just come in after putting the fire out. Because I'm new to this. The fastest way that I found to start these rocket stoves is to actually build kind of a, a um, your fire with a you know, teepee type stack just with a small bundle of sticks. Get them left on fire and then stick them down in the chimney and then start shoving your sticks into it. Um, I found a piece of birch bark that also might work as a great fire starter. Again, I'm kind of new to this. I've done a lot of research on YouTube and the internet for rocket stoves. YouTube is great for finding stuff on rocket stoves. And these two stoves that I just showed you are just kind of my own creation, compilation of things that I've seen from other people and my own ideas. So, anyways, um, I think that's about it. Seems like there's something else I want to talk about too, as far as not starting it, but oh, I know what it was. It was when you, when you're shoving the wood into the feed sleeve there, you don't want to push it too terribly far because the air wants to get around the wood for it to burn. And I notice a lot of times when I think, oh, great, my fire started, and I, I start shoving the wood in to get it hotter, but it doesn't. It actually just kind of suffocates and puts it out. So I don't know if that's because I've got that I've got that sleeve that actually has a hole, kind of the pores for the vents, because normally the, well, I'll show it again. Not too terribly hot here. This thing, I'm kind of doing this back, but anyway. This thing right here, because my wood normally fits right where those holes are. So I don't know if it's because I have that. Most most rock stoves that I've seen only have just a short short bench for the cut off usually right around here, and um, so you have a lot more airflow. I don't know, but anyways, this kind of helps keep the stove from gagging out. I think so. That's it. A couple little tips. Hope you enjoy the video. Take care. Good luck with the uh, with stove you're trying to make one yourself.